Haikyo, or abandoned buildings, are a commonly known and documented element of urban exploration here in Japan. With the younger demographic moving away from rural areas to the bigger cities, the number of abandoned homes and facilities seem to be rising every year. In 2018, Japan's Housing and Land Survey found that 13% of all homes in Japan were unoccupied. Even in a big city like Tokyo, one in every 10 homes are abandoned. But Tokyo doesn't just consist of large metropolitan areas like Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Akihabara. In the far western outskirts of Tokyo lies Okutama, a mountainous stretch of greenery enveloping small villages, homes, and buildings in a shroud of green wonder. With the main city holding a small population of less than 5,000 people, it's getting more difficult every year for a younger community to thrive. And one glaring piece of evidence of this fact is the existence of abandoned schools or Haiko. Today, I decided to venture out into the outskirts of Tokyo to explore one such abandoned school, to get a sense and vibe of what these amazing architectural fossils have to offer to visitors and explorers. Ogouchi Shochu Gakko was founded in the 1970s as a combined elementary and middle school, later merging with Hikawa Elementary and Hikawa Middle School in March of 2004 due to a decreasing number of students living in the local area. The school sits atop a steep hill overlooking Okutama Lake, built up of a single two-story building connected to a large gymnasium. Other facilities like this school pool have been inaccessible for decades, and locals of the area still use this building for certain curricular activities, but no longer are the hallways filled with the playful laughter of young kids and teachers. All that remains is the melancholic creaks of the decrepit wooden floors and the piercing screeches of the cicadas outside, signaling the end of another Japanese summer. Oh, immediate, like wooden, like kind of old, not really rotting, but what's the word for it? Like a really fragrant old wood smell. The, the kind that's actually quite pleasant. It reminds me almost of my grandma's place. So this is the entrance to the school. As you can see, all the classrooms lead to this front entrance. The students would come in here. You would take off your shoes here, first of all, because in Japanese schools, it's all about uh, the outside shoes being part of the outside. But when you're in the school building, you wear these things called uabaki. So this is considered dosoku and you change into uabaki. Obviously because school is no longer there anymore, we have these like really, Jesus, dilapidated slippers. <laughs> Like, how old are these goddamn slippers, dude? <laughs> so this school, again, I believe had all the way from the first grade all the way up until the ninth grade. So I got, I don't even know how many kids would be in each year because I mean, look at the number of shoe boxes. That's barely any. I, I can maybe count a little over a hundred. Maybe so, that's like what, 10 students per year? That's really freaking small. And I guess this is all the shoe boxes for all of the uh, teachers. Kawanabe, Takemoto, Okabe. Oh, there's even the, the vice <laughs> principal and even the uh, the main principal right here. There's this stuff inside of it. Nope, it's pretty empty. Oh, actually, <laughs> the principal's shoes right there. Is, my man was wearing Uggs. <laughs> Some nice shoes. Oh. And of course, every good school needs to have a piano. Oh, it's an organ. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, because there's the foot pedals down there as well. Jeez, I wonder if you can, this even turn on? It definitely does not turn on. God, how old would this thing be? This thing looks freaking ancient. I wonder what this was used for. Maybe, you know, one of the teachers would come in and play a tune as the students were coming to school, maybe at the end of school. I have no freaking idea. So right now we're on the first floor. Um, there's a couple of classrooms here as well as some uh, like student lobbies and teacher lobbies. Is that not the coolest looking shot down there? Wow. Just hear absolutely nothing right now. It's the middle of the day. All you can hear is the cicadas outside really giving off like a a summer, end of summer type of vibe. It's hard to imagine that there were probably tens of, maybe even possibly hundreds of students just filling up these hallways during this time of day. Cause right now it is 1 p.m. Uh, on a weekday. It's just scary to think now that there's just no sound at all. Only the sounds of my creaking. And this very creaky 
floorboard hallway. I don't know what to feel, you know? This like, this feeling of like emptiness, but also this feeling of like mystery happening right now. It's kind of surrounded by a whole lot of nothing. It's been kind of left in time. These kinds of settings are nothing new to me as someone who's consumed Japanese media my whole life. Corpse Party, School Live, and countless other pieces of Japanese media have used the concept of abandoned schools to differing results. But standing in one physically, even in the middle of the day, brought all sorts of emotions into me at that moment. Many of which were definitely inexplainable. We got the shokinshitsu right here, which is the student or teacher lobby, I guess. Unfortunately, this is locked, so we can only peer inside. It really is just kind of forgotten in time, isn't it? Because everything is just frozen. It looks like it's still being used though, because again, like this building is no longer used as a school facility, but the locals still use it for all sorts of like community driven activities. So I think some kind of like, I guess like book club happens here. But I can still see kind of remnants of where the teachers would kind of sit around and, you know, do their teacherly duties. I've also noticed as well, you can very easily tell that this is an old building just by looking at the height of these doors. Like, I'm not exactly like a tall person. I'm, I'm six foot on the dot, but this is like, I'm literally the size of this door frame. <laughs> the average height was a lot shorter. So this was probably a good height for them. But this that's how you can usually tell the oldness of a building on how high up the door frames are. Let me hit my head on this. <laughs> of course, with every cultural slice of architecture came its own unique set pieces. So here's a rather unique thing I feel about Japanese schools. Again, she goes to show how old this school is. This is a Ichirinsha Shinkyu Kirokuban, which means a unicycle grading board. I don't know why, this is a Japanese school thing. For some reason, Japanese schools, especially elementary schools and probably up to middle schools, they're really inclined on teaching students how to ride a unicycle. Don't ask me why, that's just a thing that's been tradition in Japanese schools for hundreds of years now. And this is essentially a board that shows which students have gone to the next grade of unicycling. Obviously there's multiple grade levels in unicycling. And this is where they show which students have gone, I assume from first, second, third to the top level. Again, it's just really weird. There's, I, I don't know the reasoning behind why Japanese students are kind of forced to ride a unicycle. It's Japan and clowns are the only two types of places and people that where they teach you how to ride a unicycle. I guess it was a really important part of the curriculum, so much so that they had to show it off to the rest of the school. I guess this is not so much used for the students, it's used more for the guests and the teachers. And I think, why not? We can go in. Oh my God, these, <laughs> these door frames, dude, it's so small. So that's the gentleman's bathroom right here. And behind me is the ladies' bathroom. I still don't know to this day how the hell you use this kind of toilet. Like taking a pee is all right in something like this, but you know, doing the number two, like how do you even do that? Oh, you can really hear the cicadas out here. And normally I wouldn't be allowed, but let's go into the ladies bathroom. <gasps> well, what the hell? The ladies bathroom gets so much more of a nicer toilet. You know, one that you can actually sit on. Is that the sink? Look at the size of that thing, dude. First of all, it's literally up to my knee height, but it's kind of like that. That's the size of my hand in comparison. I dare anyone to find a sink that is smaller than that. Remnants of ancient technology, old wooden carvings from past students, and other deteriorating objects forgotten in time were scattered all through the first floor, reminding visitors of a time long gone. Leaving the dark and damp first floor, we proceeded upstairs to the second floor to get a better sense of the building we were exploring. It's a lot creakier up here. Oh, it's so much warmer. Whoa, look at that. Oh my God, that's so cool. When the sunlight comes in, it really does give off a different vibe. So there's a lot more open classrooms up here, obviously, and there's a whole open window so you can see out. And uh, because of that, the heat is definitely a lot more prominent in here. But let's start 
all the way at the end, which I believe is the music room. So this is the music room. With the lack of instruments in this room, it doesn't really feel like a music room. Oh, look at these tiny seats, dude. Look at that. Just sit like this. Oh, actually, I can see some like uh, like test tube valves and stuff like that. Obviously the blackboard right there with the five lines is definitely used for music. I would know as a musician myself. might have also been used as maybe just like a standard like science room as well. Let me see if I can have this. Ah, oh, there's like test tubes in here as well. 200 millimeter Pyrex. I don't want to smell the inside of this because that, I don't know what kind of like chemically -like residue is left inside of these. I don't know when these were used last, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave them there. It kind of has the remnants of just everything. Obviously, you know, it screams a musical. And you got some drumsticks here test tube holders here for Bonson burners. I remember using these in school as well. Man. It's so goddamn humid up here. Like, I'm pretty sure you can see it in my face. I'm like sweating a million times harder than I was downstairs. I feel and look disgusting right now, I'm sorry. But you know what? This is how hot it would have been back in the day because I see nowhere for an air conditioning unit. And just remembering how old the school was, there would be no air conditioning units in here. It would just be maybe fans, maybe, or the kids would literally just have to live in this heat for, you know, six to seven hours a day, which would be fucking brutal. I was about to say, where is the piano? Because I think no matter how old of a school it is, any good music room would have a piano. Normally there would be one right up next to the blackboard because the teacher would be playing along with it, teaching the students music, but I see that there's no piano over there. So I thought, where, where the hell is the piano? <laughs> That's a goddamn piano. That is the tiniest piano I've ever seen. Does this thing work? It doesn't. Big sad. I don't even want to think about how old this piano is. But hey, I'm pretty sure this is what the teacher was using to teach the students music. You know, the floor is creaking a lot. And then you realize that there's just a giant hole in the floor as well. You know, no biggie, not, not, not a health hazard at all. We are on the second floor, mind you. So this could potentially lead to some like corpse party shit of just like falling down into the first floor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not too keen about that. Of course, the next room I had to set foot in was the one room that I think every Japan enthusiast, no matter how large or small, would instantly recognize. We're in the classroom. The fabled Japanese school classroom. Now this is truly lost in time. Everything has just been placed where it was, where it would be like this classroom was just used yesterday. Kind of creepy to think that this place has been like this, frozen in time for the past at least five years. Little lockers for each of the students. Uh, that's actually a pretty decent size, honestly. And then we have, oh my god. That's how you know it's an old Japanese school. It's an abacus. Some of you younger kids watching this video might not know what this is. Before the calculator was invented, kids used this. This is a this is a manual calculator. Yeah, I don't know how to use this either, to be honest. I'm, I'm with you kids. So this is the back whiteboard right here. Obviously, it gives you basically a timeline of the things to do. Oh, there's a list of all of the uh, classes that happen on which period and what day. Shakai, Shuji, Sansu, Kokugo, Dotoku. You don't have a class like that anymore. And then on Saturdays as well, because Japanese schools, old Japanese youth schools, used to be six days a week instead of five days a week. Can you imagine? And then <laughs> that almost landed on my foot. All right, class. We're going to be learning about why you should subscribe to this channel 
smash the like button, hit that notification bell, you feel me boys? I, I want you guys to do that right freaking now. Even this teacher's desk is really low. Like this is like the height you would normally maybe sit at, but there's no chair anywhere. So the teacher would literally just be like, maybe this tall? I don't know, am I just tall? I don't even know anymore. But I want to fulfill a weeb dream right now. That, that, that one dream that I think every kid who grew up with Japanese anime wishes they could be in the position of. Do you know what this is, ladies and gentlemen? This is the protagonist seat. Back of the class, next to the window, staring out as he contemplates how to save the world or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, in a real life scenario, especially in today's weather, this is the one seat I would not sit in because it's right next to the window. This is the heat source. This is where all of the hot heat is coming in. As you can see, I'm sweating like a motherfucker right now because it is like 30 something degrees. Man, I really do feel like the protagonist to this video right now. God damn, I could save the world. What I want, let's just continue on with the tour. So this is something cool I found in another classroom we're in. This is a mural that was painted of this school uh, Shoa 52年, so that's 1977. Oh my god, that was like 45 years ago. And uh, as you can see from this mural, not much has changed. The school looks literally the exact same. Apparently there's a pool over on the side there, which I didn't see. So I guess there's a secret pool somewhere to the side over there that is just completely inaccessible because compared to this mural, the school right now, today, is uh, very overgrown. Um, but other than that, yeah, everything looks pretty much the same that's that's kind of astounding as much as the classrooms gave off a rather vintage rustic vibe there was one element in the hallway that would really give us all a temporal whiplash for the ages so here's another thing that is very uh i guess was common in old japanese schools is these sinks in the hallways we're on the second floor hallway obviously and there's a couple of these actually along this hallway obviously because it's abandoned water's not running Unfortunately, so I can't, can't dry myself in, in this heat. But these sinks were used for a number of reasons. Um, obviously, we have the music uh, classroom right there, which I believe was also the science room as well. So, you know, maybe after some scientific experiments, you got your hands dirty, kids would come here, wash their hands. You know, maybe after they were done playing outside and before they would jump back into the classroom, they would come in, wash their hands. I just noticed there's this like weird electrical wiring right here that is connected to this cap that goes over these uh, these valves. There's a number of theorems as to why this could be here and what this is. One is maybe because this doesn't look like it's connected to any kind of like heat tank or anything. So this honestly might have been like a thing to warm up the valve to either produce hot water or perhaps because we are in the middle of the mountains in Nokutama, it gets very cold here during the winter. So maybe this thing was used to keep the pipes warm so that it doesn't freeze over and stop the water from coming out. Either way, that, really goes to show how old this place is, using this kind of like old school technology to make the most out of light. That's really neat. Although we couldn't explore every classroom in the building due to strict health and safety regulations laid out by the local government of Okutama, the sheer silence and stillness of the entire building was more than enough to give me these strange feelings of F morality and melancholy, only the loud creaks of the floorboards providing any sign of life. But of course, there was one other building left to explore, one that was essential to any Japanese school, abandoned or not. All right, coming out onto the second floor, we've got a little sky hallway. What do you call these? I call these sky hallways that lead to the massive gymnasium that is next to the main school building. There's also an entryway down on the first floor as well, but since we ended up on the second floor, figured why not take the scenic route looking out over there. So this is where the kids would come out and do some sports, I guess. I don't know how big this gymnasium, this, this building is actually quite massive. So I'm assuming this gym is gonna be quite big, but the entrance is right over here. It also leads to some kind of uh, apartment building or something over there. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's part of the school or just something else. Let's see inside the gymnasium. Whoa, this is huge. <laughs> oh, 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> this place is huge, dude. Holy crap. Okay, so normally, right, with these kinds of like gymnasiums, this is where they would, you know, at the beginning of the term or at the end of the term during graduation, stuff like that. This is where they would do the ceremonies, right? Like the kids would all be standing here listening to the principal. Um, I doubt there were this many kids at this school to warrant a gym this large. I mean, you can hear the echo. Ah! <laughs> That's so loud. We got b-ball. Let's play some b-ball. Oh, that's so loud, dude. <laughs> if I get this shot in, you have to smash like right now. That's what I'm talking about. This is like the kind of like ropes that you see in like American gyms, right? Like the, the gym class where you'd have to like climb up on the ropes as high as possible. I hope they at least put like a mat down on this because otherwise this would be really, really freaking dangerous. I reckon that's a good maybe 10 meters up at least. That'd be terrifying. And of course, we didn't have a, a regular piano in the music room, but of course, in the gymnasium, we have a goddamn grand piano. Why did they not have this in the music room, huh? Oh, this is a very old piano. It still works. So obviously they would use this grand piano to play, you know, the school anthem, maybe even the national anthem during ceremonies and stuff like that. So I feel yet again, this is another very unique thing about Japanese schools is that up here we have the lyrics to the school anthem. I don't know about other schools around the country. My school in Australia didn't have anything like this. This is the lyrics to the Japanese, I guess the elementary school school song. And then over there, there is the one to the middle school school song. I don't know why it's different. I don't know why it can't just be the same song. Ladies and gentlemen, The Weeknd. So if you guys have seen your handful of anime based in schools, middle schools, high schools, then you, this scene is probably already familiar to you. This is where there'd be the, the school play arc, where the, the principal would do his speech during graduation, all that kind of stuff. You, you, you've seen it before. But seeing it in reality, is definitely a lot more grandiose. I mean, I, and I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this isn't even like a big gymnasium either, especially compared to some of the other gymnasiums in some other bigger schools out there. But still, like considering the fact that this school probably had maybe you know a hundred students max, and yet this massive of a gymnasium exists right next to it is is pretty astounding. I definitely feel again that this room, especially really shows off kind of the emptiness of the entire school. Just like, there's, there's nothing more than like a big echoey space where you can only hear your voice and nothing else. It really is somewhat ominous. If the school building didn't give me enough of a sense of melancholy, the gymnasium definitely did, and it's almost hard to explain why. Perhaps it's because this building really does mark a number of very important beginnings and ends for Japanese students. Perhaps this was the last place all the students gathered to mark the end of this school's life some 15 odd years ago. Imagining a scene like that taking place here definitely made me stop to appreciate this environment even more. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this little tour of an abandoned school in the mountains of Japan. Big, big thank you to the town folks of Okutama for letting me film at Ogochi Shochu Gakko. This was a really, really cool experience. I've never really been to any kind of abandoned school in Japan, and this was a video that I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. So I'm glad I got to show it to you guys and really, uh, you know, get to enjoy and experience and appreciate, I guess, the not only the architecture, but also just this weird sense of nostalgia that I get, this weird sense of memory. I never really grew up in an environment like this. And I don't think a lot of you guys watching really grew up in an environment like this, but something about an abandoned school like this in the mountains of Japan really gives off that strong sense of nostalgia that I really enjoy. If you guys do enjoy this video, I'll be able to do my other dream video, which is to film in a non-abandoned Japanese school. If you guys would like that, then hey, leave a like on this video, make sure to subscribe. I think what I'm gonna take away from this experience is the fact that, you know, time is really just, I guess, a fleeting thing. And it really does go to show in old architecture like this. And I think that's, uh, Something that is very special and memorable. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Johnny.